Shalom, everybody. Hope you're doing well. The Kivi here. I wanted to share with you a quick little thought about Parsha Titro. It's an unbelievable portion of the Torah in which the whole Torah is starting to be revealed to Tom Yisrael, to the Jewish people. With the unbelievable experience on Mount Sinai, with Moshe going up and the entire nation camping out at the bottom of the mountain, waiting for this incredible moment in the history of all human time. And there's a million things to say, as always. But I'll just say this, that we learn that the, 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 the nation goes to Moshe after the first of the two, it's usually translated as commandments, it's not the best way to say it in English, right? Because um, the Sertadi brought to the ten sayings, these ten sayings, right, from above to below, from the heavens to the earth, from God to the, to the nation of Israel. And after the first two, the nation of Israel is just like, enough Moshe, we can't take it anymore. Their souls were flying out of their bodies. It was such an intense spiritual experience that we can't handle it. You listen to the rest and you tell us. I, what's interesting about the first of these ten sayings, it starts with the word Anochi. Anochi, I. Anochi, Hashem Elokecha. I am Hashem, your God, that took you out of Mitzrayim, that took you out of Egypt and from slavery. Anochi begins with Aleph. So there's this whole beautiful teaching that asks a question basically, what did the nation of Israel, what did they really hear there? What does it sound like to hear these ten things of God, you know, from above this mountain in fire and, you know, cloud and blast of the shofar? So basically this teaching eventually says that really all they heard was the Aleph. They heard the sound of the Aleph. But when we think, what is the sound of the Aleph? The sound of the Aleph is only what comes with it, the vowel the, that is attached to it. But in and of itself alone, what sound does it have? It's the sound of silence. And it's actually a beautiful midrash that says when the Torah was given, the whole world went silent. All noise stopped in every realm, in every part, every corner of the earth. It was this moment that the entire world felt that something extraordinary was going on that something incredible was happening. And its response was silence. There's a million things to say about silence, ironically. But just to sit in a moment of silence, to try to understand, try to experience what that was like for an entire nation, an entire world, to be in the silence, right, at the highest revelation, which brought together the heavens of the earth. And this, the sound of silence, I think, is so beautiful because it sounds different to everybody else. The olive sounds different to everybody else. Right? What I heard and what you hear and what they heard, it's all different. And I think that's the, one of the big ideas of, of the giving of the Torah, of the existence of the Torah, is that it sounds different. Yes, there's rules and there's laws and there's, there's borders and there's do's and don'ts and there's all these amazing things. There's all these ways of life, instructions of, of living an incredible, spiritually nourishing life. On some level, the, the Torah is a mirror. I look into it and I see something. You look into it and you see something else. I look into it and I hope, hopefully see myself. You look into it and hopefully see yourself. Right? It's the same thing with the olive, same thing with the silence. Right? And just one last thought connected to that is that there's this idea of a mitzvah miyuchedet. That though the Torah has 613 mitzvot right, that people are supposed to connect themselves to and bring into existence in the world, actualize, each person has a specific individual mitzvah that's really talking to them. That's really their the mitzvah that's just like so who they are. It's right? so who they are. More than any other mitzvah in the Torah. Right? And through that mitzvah they really find their personal connection to the Torah, to God, to themselves, to the world, to what they're doing here. And so I want to bless us all to, as we connect to the Torah, we try to come close to the Torah, and as we try to understand the Torah, we wrestle with the Torah, we question the Torah, and all these amazing, beautiful things. We try to use the Torah as a mirror to see ourselves, to find ourselves, to wrestle with ourselves, and to find that one point in the Torah that is so us, that is so who we are, and to that point become more and more ourselves and do more and more of what we're supposed to do in this world. Saying love and blessings, all the best, be well.